play against many players who did that. Mm. You wouldn't have had so much hair to pull out, Vic. I had quite, actually, <laughs> back, back, it's back, a back, long then. time ago, I had a bit there. <laughs> McBrien then is getting ready to bowl. 96 for three. And yeah, it was absolutely worth it. It was quite juicy having Kampfer come on with with Banton there who he's dismissed three times yeah. in his early career and, and Morgan having got him as well but McBrien in then Banton going back punching it along the ground down to long on and jogging through for one to take him on to 20 off 21 balls in the way Morgan was hitting those sixes some of those shots and the way he got that scoreboard moving almost sort of without you noticing like how quickly mm. he's moved to 50 it was a bit reminiscent of how he took the attack to Afghanistan in the World Cup yes I mean that that innings was was blistering but it took your breath away at how quickly he scored almost sort of without is like really yeah. realising that's right his timing is fantastic as you say he's a relatively slight blow but he's just got it hasn't he that's that sense of timing so five inside the circle, three on the offside, two on the on as McBrien's around the wicket and he comes forward off the inside half of the bat and towards mid-wicket McBrien, um, Balburnie, the captain skips forward to field. Morgan settles again, his bat raised now and he's launched him over mid-wicket, it's gone quite flat for four, really well struck, well in front of square, just picked that up effortlessly, takes England past the 100 mark. 101 for three, and Morgan on to 56. Well, yeah, that's, it's just beautiful placement more than anything. It's sped there. There's a gap at mid-wicket, uh, and he fetched him. And the, I mean, the other thing that is remarkable about Morgan is that when he took over, he insisted that... We're going to struggle to find that ball. Have they found it yet? Oh, they got it. He got insisted, under the cover, did it? Yeah, no, he, uh, he insisted that he wanted his team to play in a different way, without fear, uncluttered my play with freedom. Well, that's, it's easy to say those sort of things. But then he'd go out and bat just like that. And that's exactly what he's doing here. And it's almost like he's giving a masterclass. Look, don't care what the score is, if it's three down for 40, you bat your own way, and positively. McBrien around the wicket again, going back, punching it gently into the onside. Balburnie comes forward to pick up, no run. Morgan waits. In goes McBrien, comes forward, defends. He's able to just switch so, again, effortlessly between the attacking shot when he knows it's there to be struck and then a decent delivery, gives it the respect, plays solidly. McBrien, a little skip in his run up there, turned just wide of Balburnie, gently by Morgan, jogging through for one, brings a man in from the deep. Ball scuttles in along the ground to the keeper that time. It's the end of the over, six runs coming from it, including that well-struck four fetch from outside the off stump. So 102 for three after 16. And potentially that will help Banton because you don't pick Tom Banton and ask him to play cagely. That's not what he does. <laughs> well, he's, he, he's having to accustom himself know, to play, batting in the middle but, order, isn't but he? But he can look down the other end and say, well, hang on a minute. Uh, this, this, my captain, he's... <laughs> trying to smash it everywhere with, with a certain amount of discretion and the logic of that is okay then right I'll play my own way as well then uh, which is he, he, he's not a grafter Bandon he's a hitter or a striker of the ball Morgan on strike Kampfer still on from the pavilion end is wide Morgan reaching for it bottom edge is into the ground and point runs across to his right hand side to pick up it's a wide though so one more for England's total we oh, keep did a, rather lurch for it. Yeah, we keep a standing up to camp for, for the first. After that straight six, he, he he ran down the pitch to hit him for six. So yeah. Tucker's come up to the stumps yeah. for Camphor. Camphor bustling in around the wicket. So Morgan tries to play a very late dab, but misses and into the gloves of the keeper, standing up. So it makes him adjust the way he plays. Yeah, Morgan. exactly. It keeps him. I mean, it, it stops him running around yeah. the crease, and I think it's a good ploy. Talking it, of running around, Vic. Yes. Well, I don't quite know where I'm coming into this, but carry on. <laughs> no, I was just thinking you'd be running around the, the golf course yesterday <laughs> at pace. Banged in. It's another wide from camp. For Morgan got some bat on it. The ball's dribbling now down towards Josh Little at the third well, man. I think the glove must, it must have hit the gloves of the keeper. I think it'd be wide mm. a bit. Um, Missed it with the bat. Yeah. 105 for three. Yes. 17th over. 
Well, you know, I've got some, I've got some uh, binoculars on order from Amazon, Vic, for the, the next time I stand on the tee and watch you tee off from the seventh hole. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to see where the ball's gone. <laughs> D- distance, obviously, not, you know, yeah. into the adjacent fairway. Well, well. Kampfer rushing in again. Banton has bo- bottom edged it, inside edged it, past the stumps. It could have ricocheted back onto the woodwork. Throw comes back into the bowler's end and he scampered through for one. 106 for three. Well, the problem is knowing where to point them, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's a pleasurable I, so walk. It's a, well, it was lovely. For me. <laughs> it's the first time I've played golf with a spectator. <laughs> was, I, where, was I putting them under pressure? No, no. I mean, probably helped. <laughs> well, it's nice to get out and get a bit of exercise around the course, that's for sure. Here's Morgan awaiting them with the keeper up and Kampfer uh, around the wicket. Comes back into Morgan. He defends from the crease. And the keeper, Tucker moves forward to pick up. Roy out for one, best well, day for Vince 16. I could tell that you broadcast golf because, you know, at the critical moments you were silent. <laughs> yeah, I've learned, I've learned well, to, learned to whisper around yeah. the greens when I've been at an Open Championship, for sure, well. been at the Open. Morgan on 57. Camp for full. Morgan's used his wrists to work this away and find the gap beautifully behind square on the onside for four more. Yes, yep. ju- just a flick. I mean, he... He is timing the ball beautifully. He's, he is a sort of touch player. Uh, and sometimes it takes him a while to find that touch. When he finds it, he plays some startling shots and he hits with such power, with such little effort. That was the, the hockey or the hurling yeah. influence, the break of the wrists. Camphor in again, missing into the gloves of the keeper, looking again to go back and dab down towards the third man region. Well, he's keeping Tucker behind the stumps interesting because outside there are stumps. He has played and missed a couple of times. Takes some catching standing up. It's a little nick. It's not too bad, but it's a big nick. Yeah. Struggling a bit. Mm. 61 off 50. The England captain coming in with England 14 for two as he did. Kampfer in again. Oh, and he has edged this very, very fine though down to the boundary for more. Kampfer's left with his hands on his hips and he's got a <laughs> smile on his face. I think he's relishing the challenge of bowling to Owen Morgan. He really is. He's up for the battle, but Morgan's winning at the moment. In terms of the runs, 65 off 51, 114 for three off 17, England. Yeah, that went incredibly fine. Uh, I'd like to see it again. I think it was, must have been an edge. Otherwise, it was a stroke of genius because it got so fine that third man had no chance of stopping it. went past where a fine third, first slip would have been. And uh, Campo, well, he's had a great time. He was beaming ruefully at uh, Owen Morgan, who he was probably watching from a great distance, batting at Lords last summer in the World cool. Cup final. Absolutely. He's pinching himself that he's even here, Camphor. McBride in the reverse, and he hasn't got hold of it, Banton. The ricocheting off his pad, then dribbling towards the keeper. But uh, it's the first time we've seen him bring out the reverse. It didn't come off that time. There is a, a deep uh, sweeper on the cover boundary at deep backward point. Clipped into the onside this time. Banton jogs through for one, takes him on to 20. One from 23, 115 for three in the 18th over. He had a chance to chat to Kampfer at the end of the, the last match. Right. And I learned a few things about him. Firstly, that his idol, because mm-hmm. he's an all-rounder, and born in South Africa, as Morgan comes forward and drives through extra cover along the ground. It's Kampfer diving for it, puts an athletic tumbling stop. And coming back for the second, the throw comes in. His idol, Jack Callis. So you can see that kind of combative punchiness about him with bat and ball. So not a bad idol to have. But yeah, it feels like he's he's settled in very well with the Ireland camp. Admitted that he didn't really know much about Ireland and Irish culture before joining them. Can he understand them? Can he understand William Porterfield? Can he understand his accent as well? (laughs) Oinked! Oh, in the air and then put down at short mid-wicket. Hands on the head from the keeper. Morgan's coming back busily for the second run. And a rather disconsolate Josh Little, who there was left to pick up after Balburnie wasn't able to make the grab. But it was hit hard, yeah. two hands above the head. I mean, it was a tough catch, mm. and you wouldn't expect to catch it 10 out of 10 by any stretch. 
but could be crucial. And the way Morgan's going is that one's blocked back at the pitch, fielded by the bowler in his follow through. Well, that was Morgan on 67. I suppose he's got. And again, McBride stroking it into the ground and then fielded by McBride, who then feigns a shy at the stumps and he's now ended up flush on his front on the ground and looking a little bit a little bit doleful with that chance having gone down but yeah it was a tough chance hit really hard it went yeah. so fast off the bat you heard the crack but the uh, partnership now 75 119 for three after 18 England yeah I think it'd been a, it would have been a, a bonus really if he caught that but it was a chance uh, we set high standards up here <laughs> we did and uh, I'm just thinking oh you're going to go now I am Vic so I'll let you continue talking though Camphor's about to bowl Kevin is going to be coming in yeah well I'm thinking about Camphor who's coming in and bowling to Tom Banton who clicks it off his legs out to square leg and he'll get a single and that takes it to 120 for three Kevin is effortlessly connecting himself with a bit of a wince in the process Could be with us any second. Never quite with you because you. Well, you know, relative. As, as, as it's a relative as, term. Yeah. I suppose. Are you with us now? Well, I, I, I'm going to hold that I together. I can hear you. Yeah, that's the main thing. Can you hear me there? Yeah. Thank you. 120 for three. 19th over. Camper around the wicket. Cuts a backward point straight to the field. It's still a sharp piece of fielding. Morgan 69. Banton on 23. Quick turnaround for me, that one. I've only, only had 15 minutes off. Barely time to have my makeup put back on again. Ah, now, I, now I'm confident I'm fully plugged in. That's good. <laughs> I, I heard the click. Comfort around the wicket. And that's been drilled along the ground by Morgan. And he will get a single to take his score yeah. to 70. And England 121. For three in the 19th. I know a lot of musicians do their best work when when unplugged. I think. Oh, you you believe so? I believe so. Anyway, getting back to camphor, I have this thought. It could be quite difficult to pick up some of those Irish accents. He's coming in. He is, and he's bowling to Banton. Banton won't get anything there. He just strikes the ball to wide mid off. I just. It just occurs to me he's got Graham Ford there to act as an interpreter should he need one in the long conversation with some of the Irish team with a, a broader accent. Probably not worth pursuing this. He's settling in fine. Well, we, we, I think we were, we were part of a group the other night talking about this, isn't it? It's not so much accent, it's the speed in which people speak. And certainly in Ireland, certain parts of Ireland, they speak very quickly. Next delivery. Ooh. Oh, and they play in a mess. Terrific ball from Camphor, and not a very good shot at all from no. from Banton. No, he's, he's, he's been playing quite well actually there, but that was just a, a short arm swish. A late decision almost. Camphor marches back to his mark, doesn't waste any time. He, he fancies it. Banton, I think. He's got him out so often, twice in this series. Legs pumping again from Camphor into Banton Banfo, uh, Banton comes across his stumps turns that behind square on the onside they'll think of two and they will get two and with reasonable ease in the end it's a little bit brighter here at the, the Aegeus Bowl uh, quite a lot of blue sky sun now makes an appearance behind the cloud which has dispersed a little and that cloud that is there is, is more white than grey now and it looks more of a picture, and uh, as do most cricket grounds, of course, when yeah. the sun is out, they look good. But th this one, I think, very resplendent when the, the, the sun is shining because of the, the way that it's sort of surrounded by trees up on the bank behind the Rod Bransgrove Pavilion as we look out from our commentary position, but also around the sides as, as well. And you can see there's, there's a little bit of a breeze blowing. You can see on the trees away to our right next to the Shane Warne stand. And McBride continues to bowl and that's pushed into the offside by Owen Morgan for no run and McBride again around the wicket playing back and trying to find a big enough gap Banton could be in trouble but okay because in fairness to Banton 
Right. Even I heard Morgan sounding a little indecisive there for a well, moment he, or two. <laughs> well, he, he said decisively yes, and then he said very quickly after that decisively <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and he got his no in quick enough for Banton to turn back. But all is well. He looks to sweep again and straight to the fielder at short, fine leg. Can't find the gaps at the moment, can Owen Morgan, but he's batted extremely well for his 70 off just 60 balls. He stays in. Goodness knows how many of them. You know, there's so much time left in the innings, that's what I'm thinking. Brian around the wickets, leaning back, carves that one. Paul Sterling will try and attempt to stop, and he does better than the attempt. He achieves it as well, just on the edge of the circle. Behind score on the offside, but Morgan will get one. He'll take his score to 71, 124 for three. Two balls left to the 20th over. Owen Morgan and Paul Sterling, former Middlesex teammates. Now Sterling, of course, back as an overseas for North Anslater. This has gone a long way in the air. It's going to be safe, and it's coming down towards us with one bounce. Uh, just a bounce inside the boundary rope for four for Banton. Well, I think he knew what he was doing there. There's a long on on the boundary, and he just made sure he got inside the line of the ball so that he could hit it over mid-off. And he didn't quite middle it, because when he middles it, it travels a long, long way. But he got enough. The placement was good. Four runs. 128 for three. McBride over the wicket here. And this one's along the ground to Adair to run to his right-hand side with the right-arm throw. And there will be a single. 129 for three. 20 overs gone. Morgan on 71. Banton on 30. This after something of a, an iffy start for England and a very good start for Ireland. Uh, Jason Roy was out. Uh, Johnny Bairstow out very cheaply. He went for four. A Mark Adair delivery, which he got an inside edge. Roy was caught at second slip. And then James Vince was caught. Actually, Johnny Bairstow, forgive me, I've got to mix up. James Vince was with inside edge through to the keeper. Johnny Bairstow, actually, uh, through the gap there, nipped back from Mark Adair. Adair drafted into this Ireland team for today. Bairstow out for four. Vince for 16. 129 for three. Next ball is played where? But down behind square on the onside. Josh Little is the fielder. One run for Banton. So England seem to have sailed through those early difficult waters to now look as if they're on the way to quite an imposing score in total if they carry on like this. Partnership worth 86 runs off 75 balls between Morgan and Banton. And, and Morgan has just been exquisite throughout, really. Uh, Banton, when he struck the ball, he struck it very well. Doesn't have quite always the control, seem, composure seemingly of Morgan. But then again, there's something of a difference. One, in the way sometimes they play the cricket, but certainly in their experience. But the fact is that Banton, coming into today of scores of 11 and 15... He's got himself up to 31 today. It was a 39 ball 50 for Owen Morgan. So it's Kampfer around the wicket. Morgan will help it on its way down towards the boundary here. There's just a single to be had. And the score now moves to 131 for three. And Charlotte Edwards is back alongside and the sun is out it, it's a beautiful picture we do not complain as you know Charlotte uh, but it does get a little bit bright in here as you may realise as the afternoon goes on no complaints no I won't be complaining but I might need my sunglasses yes at some point it's nice to see though Camphor comes over the wicket up onto his toes Banton punches that one but straight to the fielder there's been quite a lot of that going on today uh, a lot of decent shots we just can't get it past the perfectly placed field almost of uh, Andrew Balburnie. Yeah, they have. They've hit a lot of to fielders, but you know, you look at the score and England are still on 131 for three off 20 and you know, they're in a fine position to really make that big score. Comfort again to Banton. Banton works it on the onside this time. Is it going to get the better of the fielder out there at mid-wicket? Yes, I think it does. Uh, despite... A very, very valiant attempt with the left arm to try and pull that ball back just inside the rope. It does go for a four, so it takes Banton to 35, and England up to 135 for three, one ball left of this over. Yeah, it wasn't perfectly timed again by Banton, but 
he's a strong man and he managed to just find the left of the deep square fielder out there. It's Delaney who couldn't quite get that ball now. This one's gone in the air, but it's one bounce and four down towards third man. In fact, it's over the boundary rope. It's gone for six. And Camfer can't quite believe it. Uh, it has to be, of course, for, for Curtis Camfer following two amazing, outstanding performances that it won't always go that way for him. Uh, so far, with 12 runs coming off that over, a six to finish off the over, he now has five overs, no wicket for 42. That's, I think they've given that a six, but it was actually a four, and I think the oh. Ireland players are starting to, to question that. Charlotte, you, you know, you've always been one of my favourites. You continue to be so because it's usually me that gets it wrong, and I thought I'd seen it incorrectly there. But no, you've got to back me up on that one, no, Charlotte. Look, it's about thank a, you. About six foot in the boundary. You can come again. Thank you, Kevin. Because it, it's nearly always me that gets it wrong. But thank you. I thought always the eye's gone again. <laughs> I was a little surprised to have seen those armour raised. Anyway, have they spotted that? I don't think they have yet. Yeah, they, look. Yes, they have. They're going to correct it. OK. And uh, I think that's going to make the score 139 for three now instead. It does, after 21 overs. Brian around the wicket, in bowls. This is in the air. Could this be a catching opportunity for Little? No! Reaches a right hand out, tries to snatch it and can't do so. And that's a boundary. He had to cover a little bit of Graham McBride. Looks a little bit frustrated there. It's Morgan who will get the runs for England. Yeah, and I think I would feel a bit frustrated as bowl. It felt like it was in the air a long time and Little could have got round. And I think that's just... He's made it look dramatic. He could, has. Have got, could have got into a better position. I think he could have got there quicker. It was in the air a long time. And McBride's really is giving Little the stare down there at long on. And oh, and the teapot and everything. Yeah, he's not happy. 143 for three. We're in the 22nd over. McBride, who's not a happy bunny at the moment. And that one's pushed back to him by Morgan for no run. I mean, we can see here where the ball actually... He only had to move about 10 yards to his right, and he's made a bit of a meal of that, I think. He has. He has. I, I'm, what can we... Place as excuses for him, maybe nothing at all. Diving stop off his own bowling from McBride. Sunshine coming down on that, the wind blowing. The white seating. White seating. <laughs> you can the make an excuse was... if you want one. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. Driven straight back to the bowler again, who's a very sharp piece of fielding. We saw that the other day when a five point penalty was given in a county championship match. That looked nasty though, didn't it? It was a Dieter Klein for, for Leicestershire. Yeah. I forget who the Lancashire battle was. That one went to Danny Lamb. And it was pushed back to McBride here. And the umpire saw that as being just not acceptable because Lamb really hadn't moved out of his screen. But in fairness, neither there. I think with Morgan, if he, that had hit him on, on the pads, that might have been a little bit nasty as well. Now, this has gone on the leg side again. How far has that gone? Well, yeah, it's just bounced in front of the boundary again through deep mid-wicket. Well, this now is proving a little bit too difficult for Ireland to try and hold it all together. And Morgan's into his stride, and it brings up the 100 partnership with Morgan 80 not out, Banton on 39, and the 100 partnership of 86 deliveries, 103. This pair have put on 147 for three after 22 overs. Ali Mitchell, are you ready for the action? She will be in a moment or two's time, but I think they're going to be a little bit longer coming around here. But, but a word about this partnership, because it, it wasn't going England's way when this, these two came together, Charlotte Edwards. No, it wasn't. You know, England were under pressure, and they've rebuilt this innings brilliantly, both Banton and Morgan. Morgan's been the aggressor. And young Tom Banton, though, he's 39 off 34. He, he's just in the last, probably... Three or four overs just started to open his shoulders and showing everyone what this young talent can do. And um, I think we could be in for a, a very special 28 overs, Ali. Hello, Lottie. Good to see you. Good to sort see of been you. waiting for Banton to hit his stride in this series. And it's a, not a bad time to be doing it. Up on his toes time, forcing this one away. 
out towards the cover boundary, finds the gap between points and Paul Sterling there at cover, going through for another one. So he's on to 40 now off 35, 148 for three in his 22nd over. England on for a target a total well in excess of 300 here. Yeah, I think Tom Banton's been really lucky today. Actually, he's, he's come out to bat when Owen Morgan was there, and mm. I think he's probably helped Tom get through that period of, you know, through that early teens. Little in over the wicket to Morgan this time out towards the cover boundary, brings the man in off the fence, jogging through for another single. He's on to 81 now, 149 for three. He's probably taken the pressure off him a little bit because Morgan's been in such good touch as an ease. If the Irish bowlers have missed their lengths, he's punished them every single time and Banton's just gone to really 40 now without playing a shot in anger. And um, can't wait to see what this young player can do. Well, he's searching for a maiden ODI 50 here and he's smacking that away. He's got a hold of it very quickly. Camp for a diving stop on the tumbling stop by the rope. Sends the ball back in and picked up another two. Banton on to 42 off 36. Playing in his sixth one day international. Morgan's given him pretty big raps, to say. In an interview the other day, he called him the most talented player he's seen to pull on an England shirt. Wow. So if you talk about pressure, if he, hopefully he's gone out there and he's taken that pressure right off him. He also, though, referred to him as a bit of a moon man. Oh. As Banton is facing up now, 42 gets a wide one, throws the bat at it. Fielded at widest third man, taking another one. And he moves on to 43 now. Which I think is sort of an affectionate way of saying he can be a little bit of a space cadet, <laughs> you know, when you're talking to him. In terms of his talent with the bat, England passed the 150 mark at 152 for three in the 23rd over. Then, yeah, he's a, a huge time. We saw it in the, the T20 blast last season, didn't we? And we've seen it in leagues around the world now. Morgan gets a short ball, swings it away. It's gone high. I think it's cleared the seating. It's crashed into the concourse. That is enormous from Morgan. It's enormous. This ground is a big ground. And that, like you say, Ali, is one bounce onto the, onto the concourse. They've tried to go short at him today and it's just not worked other than hitting him once on the helmet. Most other times he's dispatched them. It's been a fantastic inning so far. Now I've lost sight of the player who's, who was for that fielding down at third man has just had to climb up the seating, disappeared almost behind the hotel but he has retrieved the ball, went fully out of our sight. So it's going to be quite the delay but I mean wow, it's, it's the swing and the, and the pivot and the bat speed. It's his, it's his back lift, isn't it? It's in a really good position to play the pull shot. And I don't know, because I know he had some problems in test cricket with the short ball, but it just feels like it's just the perfect shot with his setup that they probably need to go at a different tactic, I think. Well, the ball's been retrieved and Little is running in again and Morgan clips off the hip down towards fine third man. The keeper's chasing back. Morgan wants the second and it'll be a couple of leg buys. Yes, waiting for the signal. There comes the signal. 158 for three. Morgan 87 off 71 balls. Off 72 balls. Uh, his 100 against Afghanistan at Old Trafford. I was saying when Vic was on, Lossie, that, that some of the shots he was playing early on and how quickly he advanced to 50 was reminiscent of that World Cup match where you looked at the scoreboard and you, how, how has he suddenly got to 50 that quick? Yeah. Then how has he got to 80 that quick? But he actually reached 100 off 71 balls in that game. So he's not quite in that territory but his fastest hundreds for England, that the fastest, 71 balls against Afghanistan. He had an 81 ball hundred in Cuttack against India uh, three years ago and an 82 ball hundred against New Zealand at Trent Bridge in 2015. Sort of the, the start of the, the new wave under Trevor Bayliss and the path towards the, the 2019 World Cup. But yeah, it's been really impressive from him. A duck in the last game, just put that completely out of his mind. He was so cool, calm and collected, batting with Billings uh, in the first ODI here. And now he sort of shepherded Banton, who at the yeah. very beginning of his innings didn't look completely certain, but he's now got into a, uh, a better better flow in his innings. So no, He's really turned this England ODI team around, hasn't he? From the way, and he, he was the one who said, well, we've got to always take the positive option. And he's always the one that leads the way. Like, even in a tough situation, they were 50 for three. He comes out and starts hitting them over the top. And, and that gets respect from the players. And 
Massively. McBrien, new over Banton, launching him high in the air this time. No point chasing that. Smacks into the bucket seats. Banton's doing a Morgan. Just a clean, clean strike of the ball to take him on to 49. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he even timed that ball either. And, you know, that's gone 10 rows back into the seating. Lovely flow of the bat. But I think... Um, we could be in for a very special partnership at Ali here if these two continue in the same vein. Well, we're seeing Morgan as... He doesn't even feel like he's the old guard. I mean, you don't know how long he's going to go on for, but Banton is the new guard, and he's the new talent, new kid on the block. And he is impressing in this innings. He's on 49 off 38 balls, and he's facing up to the spinner, McBride. Drops one a little bit shorter, and he goes back, punches it into the ground and fielded on the onside. Brian picking up again. He's seen a couple of say, chances, half chances go down off his bowling. But Bryant in a little bit quicker. And Banton comes forward defensively, sends Morgan back. And there's time to get back as well. Moments moments of semblance of, of alarm. No real panic. Fielded by McBride there in the covers. Clapping his hands together enthusiastically. Try and stop Banton getting his 50 here. Little clip into mid-wicket. Will bring up the 50 though. And Banton gently jogs through. And it's a maiden one-day international 50 for the talented Tom Banton. I sense we're going to see a lot more of this from him. But it's been an entertaining knock. A knock that well, he's, he's worked his way into the innings. 50 off 41 balls, six fours and a six. It's been a superb inning so far from Tom Banton. Morgan now to the spinner. Defends into the onside calls of no. And you really felt that he fought himself at times because, you know, his natural instinct is to be really aggressive, but he had to just rein himself in in the early bit of the innings. At Brian and sweep from Morgan. has gone high in the air. It'll be perfectly safe. Nobody out there at the deep backward square leg boundary. Dribbles into the rope for four more. Runs keep coming. Morgan into the 90s now. Morgan 91 off 74 balls. It's the end of the over. Banton 50 off 41. The partnership's now 127. It seems a long time ago that Ireland had England felt at the time as if it was a, a bigger spot of bother than it's turned out to be. There were 14 for two in the fourth over and Roy went for one. Best, I went for four. Vince out for 16. It was 44 for three in the ninth over. And then Morgan and Banton have taken charge. 24 overs gone, 171 for three. And you feel it has to have helped Banton that Morgan's been out there with him playing in the way that he has. Banton is on strike once more. And he, outside the off stump, shaped to try and cut it, but it was maybe a little bit too close to his body. And he misses it, goes through to the keeper. Yeah, so, I think he's just allowed him to sort of get into his innings. I think probably if there's any criticism of him so far, he's probably looked to be a little bit too aggressive too early, but he's just steadied himself into this innings and but that's been allowed by the way Morgan's gone about it he's been the positive one the aggressor and that must come from the instinct of being an opener that you just want to get going from the off it's the way Banton plays and plays successfully it's got him into the England setup and pulled along the ground out towards fine leg just turned it around the corner swiveling and goes through for one 172 for three in the 25th over but he's also in a new position and you know I think you know as a young player, you need to be flexible. I think when you're so often used to opening, maybe for your county, but then when you get to play for England, you often come in the middle order. So I think it's also about adjusting to those sort of positions as well and the changes that are required to those positions as well. Well, Morgan could be on for his second fastest 100 here. He's defending one up to uh, mid on, finds the fielder, fires the ball back into the gloves of the keeper. 91 off 75 balls. He was asked. Uh, the other day if in order to try and get used to batting in a middle order role for England would he go back to Somerset and ask to, to bat in the middle order but he, he wasn't very impressed with that idea oh, I think right. he gave it pretty short I think he maybe <laughs> like well I haven't really thought of that to be honest no I, I open I love opening I want to open which is fair enough it is what has brought him this success Morgan pulling away again once more into the seating clearing the rope another six for Morgan He's crashing the ball around this vast, vast ground, the Aegeus Bowl, and he's on to 97 off just 76 balls. That is fourth six. It's 
fantastic stuff. It is, but it's poor bowling in my opinion. You know, they keep banging in short and they keep getting dispatched for six. And I think simply not quick enough to get um, or make Owen Morgan feel uncomfortable. He's, he's playing it with such ease and he's raced on to 97. And in no time at all. Facing up again on 97 and this time defends. Slightly full of length from Little. Morgan just stood still at the crease. Patted the ball back, blocked it back. It's been a, quite a thundering knock from him. Brilliant to watch. It's the captain taking a leadership role. Waiting now for Little. Left arm over, he's on 97 and he wow. has just lent into a straight drive. All the way down the ground for four, straight back past the stumps. A sublime way to bring up a sumptuous 100. 101 not out, he takes off his helmet, Owen Morgan. He's embraced by Tom Banton, he's got a beaming smile on his face. He does enjoy batting against Ireland, but he has crashed this 100 around the ground. 100 off just 78 balls. It's his second fastest 100 for England. 182 for three after 25 overs. And he loves batting at the Aegeus Bowl as well. His third 100 here at the Aegeus Bowl, which is fantastic. And what a way to bring it up. It was probably the perfect shot. Just he timed it superbly down the ground. A straight drive. Um, and what a 100 it's been been entertaining it's been effortless almost yes. really has been it's his 14th one day international hundred second against Ireland third as you say at Southampton there was the the chance that went very hard above the head of Balburnie when he was on 67 but it was struck so hard that I'm not even sure if Balburnie had managed to get two hands to it but it would have been an absolutely spectacular catch if it stuck but it's 25 overs, Ali. I mean, he's got the opportunity here to make <laughs> a, a double hundred. A do, a, yeah, like it's just, um, it's unbelievable how quickly he's got this and the position they were in 40 for three. Um, but this is the, the mindset of this England cricket team. They're always on the attack. But it's been effortless, like you said. It's um, been a superb 100. Gareth Delaney's being brought on now. A uh, little bit of uh, leg spin with a drag down, though, first ball. Chopped into the ground, though, out towards cover by Banton, going through for one. He had a bit of a bowl in the first game, went wicketless. But I think this is a sign of, of the captain now looking around, thinking, well, who do I turn to? How am I going to break this stand? Partnership's worth 139 off 105 balls, and Banton and Morgan are running amok. It's one of these days when the bowlers don't look you in the eye as a captain. <laughs> Everyone looks away. And so um, you've been in that position. Yeah, I've had a few times. And um, yeah, this is a t tough situation. You're halfway through the game. They've already got 180 on the board, um, and you've got two players who are striking it so well. And, and you feel Banton still got another gear to go, don't you? In terms of his innings. Delaney over the wicket to Morgan looks a tickle it away into the leg side but struck then on the thigh pad ball drops in front of him left of the keeper to pick up and there's no run everything's been happening so fast and it's been so absorbing to watch the ball being smashed around but Ireland are really being pulverised here a little bit more air and he's sweeping aerially now towards deep square leg four more for Morgan couple of bounces before the ball reaches the rope and the motor's on, 105 not out. This is impossible for the bowlers because you've got a guy on 100, you can only have four people out of the ring. Now he's gone with a deep mid wicket, a deep long on, a deep mid off and a, a deep cover. So Owen Morgan's just thought, do you know what, I'm getting down, I'm going to sweep the, you over square leg. He's on the one. So, you know, you feel like there's just a gap everywhere for Owen Morgan to, to get his boundary. And he's so good against spin, isn't he? And particularly going with the leg side, they're hitting with the, the spin. The leg spin at this time, he stands a little taller and plays with a straighter bat and defends it back up the pitch. And Delaney picks up. Partnership is going to be ticking past 150 shortly. I haven't had a chance yet to ask of you how you are and <laughs> work with the Southern Vipers. And congratulations on being head coach as well. Delaney is in and this is pulled away. Deep mid wicket is moving in. It's an aerial just off the bat and then into the ground. 
throw comes back into the bowler's end. Yeah, I saw you briefly at the start of the test series I came here. You were on your bike, weren't you? You yeah. cycled over to the ground. Weren't allowed in the bubble, mind you. It was a bit of a distanced hello. <laughs> no, um, no, it's, it's great to be back at the ground today because we, I mean, we got, I guess, 23rd of March, we all had to leave the ground. Banton stands tall as Delaney is in. It's a full ball and they're scampering a quick single. Chance for a half chance for a run out. He's through. The ball needed to have hit the stumps there to be any real danger for Banton. He's on to 52, 53 now. Yeah, it's the end of the over, 189 for three after 26. So it's, been a, it's been a long time, so it's been lovely to be back. Yeah. It's lovely to see the ground um, in, you know, it's looking fine today. And the great work that people here have done, the ECB, to, to get these games staged, because it's been, um, you know, it's certainly um, been great for the game. And, you know, I think um, everyone's been through a tough time since March, but um, so nice to be back at cricket. Mm. And how, how's your planning going? Because there is now an elite women's competition, which there was a big fear that wasn't going to happen at all this summer. Yeah, so hopefully that's going to start at the end of August. So we're waiting for those dates. Little in, new over to Banton, who stands tall and thumps him out towards deep cover. Finds a gap between point and cover, but there's a sweeper out there and it's Kampfer. Sends the ball back in, another one for Banton. 190 for three England. Yeah, you really feel we're going to salvage quite a bit from our season mm -hmm. because... Um, this, you know, the new elite uh, domestic structure is, is such an important cog now uh, for the women's cricket. And um, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get started at the end of August. Yeah, and then there's still still time to get a shortened competition in. Little in again, and Morgan gets behind it, blocks it up towards mid off, and there's no run. Now, did you see over the last couple of days Alyssa Healy become yes. quite heated, the Australian wicketkeeper, but? about the scheduling of the well it's known as the women's IPL it's a challenge tournament isn't it that the BCCI have staged over a number of years a triangular tournament then evolving into a four team tournament to run at the same time as the men's IPL it's sort of a, a fledgling tournament if you like as little in again now to Morgan and he's skewed it off a big leading edge there could be a chance to catch edge of the circle and it is held and it's the end of the England captain he has flayed Ireland all around the park and he's gone for a quite magnificent 106 off just 84 balls. Highly entertaining to watch. Went for the big heave over mid-wicket and Tector has covered a little bit of ground and taken a skyer. Yeah, it was a tough catch actually. Um, probably the only ball that Owen Morgan's mistimed all day and it's been a superb knock from the England captain, 106 and um, what a knock, 14th international 100. Well, Little gets the wicket against his name but they've all gone for a lot of runs, the Ireland bowlers but a magnificent partnership as well between he and Banton and Banton's still there on 54 or 46 balls but between them they've taken England from 44 for 3 in the ninth over to 190 for four and we're only just beyond the halfway mark so in England depending on what happens now of course but there's a platform got Billings coming out who's been in great touch uh, in the first two games of the series but they yeah looking at if they go carry on at the rate they have been looking at the 350 mark but whether they can keep going at the rate of scoring Morgan was who knows we've got Billings then Moeen who hasn't had a much time in the middle. Tom Curran's back in the side. Willie, who has, did have a good knock with the bat in the last game. Rashid and Saqib Mahmood. Yeah, there's oh. lots of depth. And I'm sure they'll be eyeing that 350 alley. Their mindset is to get as many runs as they can and be as aggressive as they can. But Sam Billings has been quite impressive so far throughout this series. 18 matches, average of... 32 in his international career but that's been only strengthened by what he's done in this series so yep. far 67 in the first game 46 not out in the second and England now put into bat by Ireland are looking to set them a formidable total to chase but it's Banton who is on strike here standing tall but thumping the ball into the ground and up towards Sterling, who's at short extra cover. Billings down at the non-striker's end. And just to round off what I was saying about uh, Alyssa Healy, so the IPL has been moved from its usual window, of course, and, and now it's pushed back to an October-November slot, but it clashes with the Women's Big Bash League in Australia, and a lot of players 
very discontent uh, about that because of course the Australian players would like to play in the yeah. Indian League there's only sort of two three players from India who were due to play in the Big Bash yeah but Alyssa Healy very very vocal on social media about her displeasure at that scheduling heaved into the the onside now racing on the ground out towards deep mid wicket Banton coming back for the second now ball comes back into the non-strikers end well I think there was a misunderstanding wasn't it I think it was like they were thinking that they we wanted uh, well, the, the WBBL wanted the well, Indian players in the WBL but it was more that Alyssa who wanted to play in the IPL you know that why have you put the dates in the middle of the um, the mini, women's big bash um, so no one can play really Banton awaits uh, here is Little close to the body manages to work it past the square leg umpire and come back throw comes back into the gloves of the keeper for a single it's the end of the over yeah I think scheduling I think this year we hope it's going to be an anomaly what with Covid and the women's game then really should have a blank canvas to work out how all these tournaments can sit together in a jigsaw for the betterment of, of all I'll leave you to ponder about that and the state of well where England could get to here 193 for four after 27 overs Morgan a highly entertaining 106 off 84 balls and with Banton and Billings out in the middle Michael McNamee is coming in yeah, and England's player of the series certainly batter of the series so far is Sam Billings and he's out there and what an opportunity for him to, to bat 23 overs with Tom Banton who's on 57 off 49 um, so it's, uh, it's England are in a great position Michael which I Charlotte, don't like to say really well we've got to call it as we see it it's a, <laughs> it's a big big test a big big challenge for Ireland let's not forget they did win the toss and elect a bowl and the possibility of England building a, a platform like this was always going to be there. The way they bat right down, the strength, the, the shots that Owen Morgan could manufacture, the strength of his wrists, the power of his hitting. And Curtis Camphor is going to come back here at the uh, hotel end. Five overs, no maidens, no wickets for 40 so far for the supposed golden arm. And he's in, in the bright sunshine. That's a full delivery. And... Uh, Played off middle stump uh, for a single by uh, Banton, who moves on to 57, 58 now, and Billings is on strike. England have got to be thinking 350, haven't they? 350 plus probably. Well, if Ireland can can keep them substantially below that, it'll be uh, something of a moral victory. But uh, there seem to be a lot of gaps out there at the moment. It doesn't two men in fine form as well you just feel like Banton's got another gear to go yet in terms of his striking ability he's, he's very well set now 58 so it looks good for England this is Billings first ball he drives back to the bowler a little bit of aggression there from Curtis Camphor we know what sort of character Ireland seem to have found he's a, he's a fighter he's a battler and he'll keep going. And he's only 21, which is what Ireland need. They need these 20-somethings. The policy of Andrew Balberti and Graham Ford seems to have been in this in this series. We'll give them a go right through. Camper in once more. And dab down on the uh, onside behind square for a single. They've scurried back for the second. The big appeal as the throw came in. Tucker thinks that's close. As Billing scampered back. And we will see. Director, we have an umpire review from run out. Can have your best side and angle, please? The TMO is Alex Wharf. Bats well, down. Well Bats in. Bats down. Well in. Yeah, I've made my decision. Okay. Wasn't even close, Charlotte, in the end. They, the my two decision batters. Is not out, repeat, not out. <laughs> so rapid between the wickets. Camphor is in to Billings. He's pulled that away on the onside. And that's going to go all the way for four runs. And there is Billings continuing the form from the first match and the second. Yeah, another slightly short of the length ball. And again, the England players, they dispatch it. They're quick onto length. Billings continues his fine run of form. 
very bright sunshine here at the AJS Bowl. Campers in outside the off stump and pushed into the man at short extra cover who is a, a fellow known as Scra, Andy McBrien from Donna And there's no run. Drowsy feel out in that sunshine as Camphers in. That's a fuller delivery on leg stump. Played out the onside for a single. Have Ireland bowled too short today, do you think, Charlotte? I think they have, personally. I think, um, you know, they've gone for the short tactic against Owen Morgan. Maybe they had one successful ball where, obviously, it hit him, unfortunately. But the rest of... And the others have ended up in the, in, the, in the stands, haven't they? So I think, yeah. And then they've gone a bit short at Banton as well. So, yeah, I think potentially the tactic hasn't worked for them today and it did look like a predetermined plan didn't it very much very much at Morgan it did because yeah they were pitching the ball up early and as soon as he came in they te they tended to go short but um, yeah I mean it looks a good pitch but um, yeah I think they might look back on some of their um, options with the ball maybe not being the right ones but They've got a big job to do now, the last 22 overs, to try and restrict this England team. 201 for four after 28. That is the rather worrying statistic for the Irish team and fans. Banton 58 off 50, Billings 7 off 5. He's only getting started. The man is yet to be dismissed in this series. And Charlotte is going to make way. We'll hear very shortly from Michael Carberry, who's munching on something tasty looking. Normally at TMS, when you start eating something, Michael, they immediately ask you for a, an in-depth comment or a word of wisdom, but I'll let you get yourself together. There's Ireland are uh, switching the field now. I see Delaney, the leg spin of Delaney from the pavilion end. Can't resist the brownies, mate, can you? Oh, it's all free. This is why you retired, mate, so you can get fat. When I arrived here in the bubble, I was only at Stone, Michael. You know, <laughs> this has been traumatic. <laughs> Delaney in the sunshine. Keeper is up. That's a short one and pulled away. Uh, through square leg for the single. One more to the total, 202 for four. What's gone wrong with this bowling uh, from Ireland? It's saying the Charlotte was too short. Very short, yeah. From... Uh, from not quick enough to bowl that short either. Yeah, from, from their good early work. Yeah. Delaney's in. So, and he's the big appeal. The finger's gone up and Ireland have broken through and Banton has gone. Is he going to review it? He's going to have a little word with Sam Billings. But I think he's going to trudge off. And the fifth wicket is down England. 202 for five and Banton has gone. Funny enough, the full straight ball <laughs> on the stumps. There you go. They're listening to you. Yeah. Um, it's been good for many. Um, yeah, very well bowled, Delaney. Uh, the Irish bowlers, yeah, just lost their way for a time. And uh, but you know, good knock from Tom Banton. He'll be pleased that he finally got a score on the board. And Banton goes for uh, 58 of I think 51 deliveries. And Delaney has struck. I think for the first time in ODI senior cricket for Ireland. Uh, I think probably. Billings didn't give him much hope. And as Michael Carberry said, that was a straight delivery. Well, he missed it. The deadly straight delivery, eh? Not much you can do about it. And that, that's annoying for, for Banton, because he surely would have been looking uh, at a maiden century here for England. Absolutely, yeah. You don't want to pass up opportunities to, to post your first one. Um, I'm sure there'll be many opportunities for him in the future, but... Um, yeah, he would have been one of those guys to start today. He would have been looking for a score and he's, uh, they would have put a few of those nerves to bed for him that he is capable at this level, as we all know. Um, but um, it's left England again in a bit of a precarious position. Five down. Precarious? Two 202 for five? <laughs> That's not my idea of precarious, Mr Carberry. <laughs> Maybe I've been watching Ireland too long. <laughs> Ireland were 202 for five with... 20 overs to go, I'd be dancing and dancing a jig. You wouldn't want to see that. Yeah, well, you know, as we all say in the field, stick another two on it, well, seven down. Yeah. It's a different game. Delaney, one for eight so far. He'd be thrilled with that. 
and uh, Moeen is in. There's not too much so far in this series, and oh goodness me, did that just drop short of Sterling at slip? Django, Django. Well, he had a, a duck on Saturday, did Moeen. Uh, there'll be some guys who are a little bit short of time in the middle, Moeen being one of those guys. And he's forward once more, and that's slightly more of He's nervy, wants to get off the mark. My goodness me, for a man of, um, you know, such great experience, even Moeen Ali has got a few of the old butterflies at the moment. Delaney, extra spring in his step. And Moeen uh, plays that away on the onside, but again, sharp Irish fielding. And this is where it's key now for Ireland to be up now. Um, really put some, put some pressure on someone like Moeen Ali. Again, not had a lot of time at the crease. Last ball of the over. A little push and a quick run and oh, a better direct hit and that might have been out. Billings would have been in trouble there. Would you believe it are the English nerves at the end of the 29th over. Moeen is off the mark. He retains the strike. Uh, he's on one, Billings is on eight. England two, three for five. Quite a colourful first four balls for Moeen Ali. I think with a direct hit he wasn't even in the frame was he? he? Was, oh, oh. Yeah, ter uh, just slightly too high for the keeper to bring it back to the stumps. That was poor old Harry Tector who would pride himself on his fielding. Great athlete, and he has apologised to his teammates. Decent throw there, and the English batsman was gone. But those are the little half chances that Ireland have to be able to take now. Yeah. They can't let someone like Moen Ali get away. Very, very dangerous player. Camphor, six over so far. 